Shalom, shalom. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. This is an opportunity that the Lord has granted us. It's a beautiful day and uh, he has made it so because of his love. If anything we should learn in life is love. I'm talking about the love of God. I'm not talking about your love for God or your love for others. That's a wrong beginning. If you start from from there, then that's a wrong move. The only genuine right place where you should begin from is His love. His love. Because you see, let us ask ourselves a simple question. Where did we come from? Did we create ourselves or there is a creator? If there is a creator, it means the creator came first and he created us. That means it began with him and therefore all the time it begins with him. When you begin where things began from, you make it. If you fail to begin where things began from, it will be hard for you. It's a blessing. It's a blessing to know him. It's a blessing to know that it begins from him. And when you start from there, it means you have a foundation. And any anything that will be strong needs a strong foundation. A strong foundation means everything. Because there's sustainability. You can trust that whatever you're building will go far. Now imagine you are a building. You are a house, but that house needs a foundation and it's God himself. So it's a blessing, again, like I say, to begin from him is wise, very wise. And every day is created, is given to us for, for us to explore more and more um, of God's love. We need to discover more. We need to understand more of God's love because we have fallen short from the understanding of the love of God and that is also based on the kind of teachings that people keep on hearing. Now, mostly people, what, what people hear mostly does not generate love understanding. It actually gives another image of another God who is not our father but every message that is preached should generate the understanding of love and so people will be established in love people cannot be established in love unless they are hearing the gospel the good news that will produce that uh, understanding so the gospel should produce the understanding of the love of god and people will find themselves established in the love of God, and that's where there will be uh, clarity of who God is and who they are, and and that the crisis of love will be will be will be healed forever. Glory to God. Glory to His holy name forever. Now, in the book of Proverbs, where so looking into this chapter five, and they are talking about love great uh, wisdom and in this verse 12 says how i have hated instruction and my heart despised correction so now he is a voice of somebody who <laughs> hated instruction and uh his heart despised correction and that's why he found himself in the house of this hallowed and consequences of making such kind of choices followed after so what we see here is that how I have hated instruction and my heart despised correction I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to those who instructed me. I was on the verge of tottering 
in the midst of the assembly and congregation. You see, this is clear. He's saying there are people who do not enjoy instructions. And he says, how I hate it. It means he hated it so much that he doesn't even know how to explain to you which extent he hated instruction. Have you ever found people like that? Or are you like that? You don't like instruction. You don't enjoy instruction. And your heart despises correction. It's like when you're corrected, you hate it so much. But you should not hate correction. That means if you hate correction, you have chosen to stay in error. Now, there's this error of the wicked that Peter talked about, and that's the error that brings distraction. You cannot choose to stay in error, in failure, and expect to see uh, glory, and expect to see beauty, and expect to enjoy life. You see, these are secrets of opening up for wisdom. You cannot hate instruction and also hate or despise correction and think that you will be at peace. Because instruction will help you to flow without going beyond the boundaries. And you will be sure of the success of that journey because you are following instruction. Because it's easy to go astray here and there because many times man's thoughts are not stable. So since man is not stable, a lot of times they do need instructions. And so we have here somebody who hates instructions and whose heart despises, despises correction. So these are signs of a fool, a fool. Foolishness is real. Foolishness is destroying people. Foolishness is not that you don't know something necessarily. It's that you had something or you had instructions that were to lead you into success and you rejected them. You hate them. Number two, it says, my heart despises correction. If you are corrected instead of taking it seriously or embracing it, you, you just despise correction. You're like, who are you to correct me? But I thought the most important thing is not who are you, who is that person is in correcting you. If something that is said is adding something very important or positive to your life, why won't you take it? Why won't you enjoy it? Why won't you agree with it? Why would you despise it? So it is stupidity. It is lack of wisdom. It is foolishness that destroys people, I'm telling you. And this is what happens in the lives of many people. And they don't know why they are going through what they are going through. But most of these things is because they hated solution or salvation that was offered to them or given to them. And it's so, so sad because this will not help any man at all. Never help any man at all. You see, it's important to discover that this is how things are supposed to be done. Correction and instruction. Very important. Now, to make the matter worse, he says, I was on, um, he says, nor... No, I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers. Imagine you are a student and you went to school to learn because you didn't know nothing. And so those who are instructing you teachers, you are not listening to them. You disobey everything they are saying. And yet the environment where you came to is an environment of learning, instructions, trainings, getting prepared for the future or the life that you don't understand and you disobey the voice of the teacher okay a teacher is someone who teaches you who leads you who helps you who wants to see you develop developing now imagine if you hate the voice of a teacher 
if you despise, if you, if you disobey the voice of the teacher, that means you listen to another voice. We see this in Genesis when God spoke to Adam and Eve and he gave them instructions and he told them what they were supposed to, to focus on. And there came later another voice and that voice was the voice of a serpent. And the voice of serpent spoke otherwise. He spoke the opposite of what God had said. And when the voice of God, the voice of a serpent spoke, they listened to it. They heard it. They obeyed it. They listened to that voice and they obeyed it. You see? And when they heard that voice, that voice destroyed them because it was a voice full of deception and it was not there to help them. It was there to, to destroy them. And they disobeyed the voice that was to save them. And of course, that choice had to cost them a lot. Well, we have that example in Genesis. But this is exactly what this man is saying. He's saying, look, on the, he, 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 he did not obey the teachers. And he said, no inclined my ear to those who instructed me. But it's so, it's, again, it's so absurd how people listen to those who are killing them and won't listen to those who are saving them. And then how do you explain that? That's what we call foolishness. That's stupidity. And when it's on the heart of a man, there's no guarantee for a good life. There's, you, you don't know when this person will be destroyed. Any time you'll be destroyed because he's on the wrong path. They say he's no inclined my ear to those who instructed me. So there's this instruction you know, those who instructed us, those who instruct us, those who help in building our lives. He says, I have not obeyed the voice of, the te of my teachers. It's, imagine it's my teachers, but if I don't listen to my teachers, who am I going to listen to? No, incline my ear to those who instructed me. Now he says, because of that, I was on the verge of Totorin in the midst of the assembly and congregation. What do you expect? You will be utterly destroyed. He talked, he talks, he talked about the Totorin, total destruction. You are ruined and you'll never be remembered again. That means uttered, ut utterly destroyed. And even every infrastructure that was built around you is gone. There is no trace that you've been there, there's, uh, that you have ever been there. And that's what happens when we don't listen. So this is the other side, the opposite of wisdom. You see, this is stupidity, foolishness, working. Have you ever seen those things? Have you ever seen such kind of situation, you know, where, where people will not listen to instructions and they will lead themselves to destruction? And whether it's in your life or any other, in your, in the other person's life, but the most important thing here is to understand that wisdom will save you from all this. The wisdom will help you listen to those that you should listen to. Glory to God. Shalom, shalom.